Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Software Carpentry Lecture on MATLAB. In this episode, we'll have a look at some of the ways you can index arrays. As we'll see, clever indexing allows you to avoid writing loops, which both reduces the size of your code and makes your code more efficient. Individual elements in an array can be accessed using a comma-separated list of integer indices. In most programming languages, the first element of an array is element 0. In MATLAB, indexes start at 1. Arrays can be sliced by using another array as an index. In this example, we use the array 1, 2, 3, which we can create using the shorthand 1, colon, 3 notation. MATLAB programs should always use slices and other indexing operations rather than write loops over arrays. There are several advantages including shorter code that is more easily understood and improved runtime. It is also possible to assign to slices. For example, we can assign 0 to columns 2 and 3 in row 2 of block in a single statement. An array slice makes a copy of the underlying array, which means that the data values are copied to a new location and subsequent updates do not change the original matrix. Slicing on both sides of a statement gives us a way to shift data along the axes. If vector is a one-dimensional array, as shown here, then vector 1, 3 selects slots 1, 2, and 3, while vector 2, 4 selects the values in slots 2, 3, and 4. Doing the assignment overwrites the lower three values, but it leaves the uppermost untouched. MATLAB has a function circshift, which shifts values in an array in a circular pattern. Rather than discarding the leftmost item, it is placed in the rightmost spot, and all other values are shifted left. For more sophisticated indexing operations, we can use an array as a set of subscripts. For example, here's our four-element vector again, and a list with three legal subscripts, four, two, and three. The expression vector subscript gives a new array whose elements are selected from vector as you'd expect. Arrays can also be used in comparisons. When we use the result of a comparison in an index, we only get those values that satisfy the condition. Almost all arrays in MATLAB are of type double, which means they are floating point numbers. When a matrix is used in a comparison, the result is not a double. It is a matrix of integer zeros and ones. The difference is apparent in this example. Here, the array M is the result of a comparison and we can see that a 1 means that the corresponding element of v was less than 4. The array m2 is hand constructed with the same pattern as m, but the values are doubles since this is the default. Try to use m and m2 as an index. The result of the comparison, m, can be used, but m2 fails because the indices must be integers, not doubles. Another term for an index from a comparison is a mask because the Boolean array masks all the elements of a vector that fail the condition. We can use Boolean masking on the left side of assignment as well, though we have to be careful about its meaning. If we use a mask directly, elements are taken in order from the source on the right and assigned to elements corresponding to true values in the mask. Using a mask on both sides of an assignment has a different effect. Corresponding elements of the array fill are assigned to A if the location meets the criteria in the mask. In both cases, only locations corresponding to true values in the mask are affected. It's what happens at the source that changes. Sometimes, we want to replace values in a matrix with zeros without changing the size of the result. We can use the Boolean mask in element-wise multiplication to replace locations that are less than 1 with zeros. There are two sets of logical operators in MATLAB. A single AND or vertical bar corresponds to element-wise AND and OR on an array. Double AND and double OR operate on scalars only. It is usually preferable to use the single AND or single OR since they work in both cases. In logical expressions, zero is the only number that is false. Be careful, though. Very small numbers are still non-zero, even if they look like zero when you print them. To review, arrays can be sliced with vectors of indices or masked with conditionals. 
No matter what you do, if you are writing a loop over array elements, you have probably missed something or you're doing something wrong. In our next episode, we'll use the tools we have looked at so far to explore some linear algebra.